In this video, I'll be showing you how to access and utilize the simulation for our disease spread virtual lab. So hopefully by now you've got your Google Doc open, um, you have saved a copy of it for yourself instead of trying to type into the original. You're then going to click on the link right here. And then you will be brought to um, this disease lab, which is part of the Habitable Planet from the Annenberg Learner Center. Um, so a few things to know with this lab. Um, the green, this is your population right here, your population of people. The green dots are people who are healthy but at risk. The red dots are people who are contagious. You'll see later that blue dots are people are immune, either because they've been exposed to the disease, recovered, and their bodies have antibodies against it, or because they've been vaccinated. And when a, disease, when a person um, or a dot disappears, it means that person has died in the simulation. So that's what the dots mean. A few other things you need to know. Um, you'll be working in a couple of different lessons. Um, most of the time you'll be here in this virgin field lesson. That means a field that has not been um, altered in any way, but there also could be a vaccination or a pandemic field, right? Um, you have different diseases to choose from. You've got cold, influenza, measles, and red death. We'll just be working with the first three. You can see they've got names that are similar to known diseases, but not exactly the same because these are not the exact same parameters for each disease. You can also adjust the population density, the population mixing, and if we're in the vaccination field, um, you can adjust the vaccination rate. So let's come back to our starting field. Um, the first question on the lab asks you to look at the parameters or the conditions or details for these different diseases. So let's start with cold. First thing you're going to do is look at the details right here. You'll click and then you can see we've got our contagious or our sick days, um, which is five days for the cold, a transmission rate of 10% and a death rate of 0%. So you would go back to your table, you'd record those numbers in your table, and then you'd run the simulation. And a few things I want to show you with running the simulation. Um, the lab asks you to run each simulation three times and then kind of record the average that you see at the end, and I'll show you why. Um, so if we run this cold once, we see how it spreads through the population over the course of 100 days, okay? At the end of our, po uh, the end of our 100 days, the blue dots here are people who have caught it and who have become immune to it. They've survived. Green dots are people who are still at risk. Remember, red is contagious. Um, dots that disappear have died. So you can not only see the pattern of how the disease spreads in the population, you can also look at this graph here and it shows you over time how many people are at risk, how many people are immune, how many people are current, con currently contagious, and then totally, like a sum total of who all has died. The other output that you get is up here in this top right corner. So at day 100 with a population of 600, we had a 0% death toll um, and an average of 1.4 sick days per capita. Now, this lab is not deterministic. And what that means is each time you run it, you're going to get a slightly different result because it's based on the random placement of these dots in the population and the random placement and contact and transmission of the contagious people um, with the people around them. So let's run this cold again. And you can see that this time the disease spreads in a very different way. The graph looks different. We've got a different sick toll or sick days. Death toll is still zero because the cold doesn't kill anyone. Um, and you can see it actually took a lot longer to spread in the population this time. So let's run it a third time. And you can see that once again, it starts and it spreads very differently. So what you would do for your data here is you would have recorded the sick days, transmission rate, and death rate. Those under the details box are your parameters. Then you would write down your observations for how the graph looks on average over the three runs and how the population, basically how that disease spread through the population. Did it kind of trickle through? Did it blast out all at once? Was it fast? Was it slow? So record your observations here. Then you'd go back, you'd change to influenza. And then if we look at its details, you can see the flu has some different details. Um, it's actually kind of similar to the cold. It's got a three-day contagion window, um, a transmission rate of 20%, which is slightly higher, but this time it's got a death rate of 3%. So if we run our influenza, you can see how it spreads, but also that there is now a death toll of 3%. Okay? So you'd go back, you'd record that in your data table here, record your graph and population observations after you've run it three times. Then you'll need to answer some questions. Okay. And then you'll move on to phase two, which is your population density. 
um, we will, in each of these, it tells you where to set the population. So for this one, we're going to start at virgin field, influenza, low population density, no population mixing. So we're on our virgin field, we've got the flu, we're going to set it to a low population density and no population mixing. Okay, so you'd run this three times, you would change your population density then. This one asks you to record your population number. Your population numbers are up here in the top right, and you can see that those change as we, whoop, that's not what I wanted to change. Those change as we change our population, okay? Um, the, so then you'd record your observations. This one doesn't ask you to record as many parameters because we already know them from this table above. Instead, it's going to ask you to record the death toll, the sick days per capita, and your visual observations of the graph and the population. Then answer some questions. The third one is population mixing, and I'm just going to show you the differences for population mixing. So this one asks us to reset to virgin field, influenza, medium, no population. All right, so let's see what happens with population mixing. Okay, um, I'm going to show you first what this looks like with no population mixing. So if we run it, we start with a virgin field, influenza, medium population density, no mixing. So three people start as infected. And if we run it, what we see is that basically the disease spreads out in three clusters, okay? It's only those people who had it and the people that they, who started sick, and they can only spread it to people they are in physical contact with, which just means these dots that are right next to them. And those people can spread it to the dots next to them. What you don't see happening is the disease popping up in new places. And that's because the population isn't mixing. Everyone is staying in place and only contacts the people that are immediately around them. All right, how does this differ from a population with mixing in it? So let's now set the population mixing to medium. All right, I'm gonna run this again with the flu. We still start with three sick people. And what you see is that instead of having just three little nuclei of disease spreading out, we ended up with a fourth. And that's because one of the sick people, instead of staying put, maybe went to Walmart and contacted someone over here. And that person got sick and they could then start to spread it in their community. So in population mixing, the, the um, contagious people don't stay put. They go and contact other people who they're not next to and then come back. Okay, so that's what population mixing is. The last um, set of simulations that you'll do is for vaccination. So for this one, you have to change the field to a vaccination field. And you'll notice we're actually going to use not flu for this one. We're going to use measles. Um, partly because it spreads a little bit faster. Um, and we're going to set it at high population density. I've just found this is the best way to see the impacts of the disease. So if no one is vaccinated, it starts the same as before. What I want to show you with the vaccination, though, is that if you set the vaccination rate to something above none, then you start. You actually start with people who are immune. So these blue dots now in the vaccination field mostly represent people who have been vaccinated against the disease and therefore are immune to it and can't get it. Um, and so you'll run those popular run those simulations and then record your data and answer some analysis questions. Um, so you'll record those three kinds of data, answer some analysis questions, and then I'll ask you to look at some real data at the end of your lab. So that is how you use the simulation and your virtual lab. Um, if you've got questions or are having trouble accessing it, please contact me.